to get us across a month or two bridge. Here's another question that was submitted. How do you plan to resolve the $29,850,000 projected cumulative deficit for the next four years without compromising BBC students or cutting more classes? There has been steps already taken to, um, to bring that, that deficit spending down. And I, I will continue with that, okay? It, solvency is the number one thing financially. The institution has to survive. All of us have a vested interest in that. So um, the, 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 uh, those on the uh, right and those on the left will find common ground in making sure that that institution survives. It's in our best interest to make sure that happens. Charles, this is this is this is bigger than a sixty-four dollar question. We have some some great people in finance. Uh, we have some great senior leaders at at, at the college. Um, they know my feeling about cutting classes versus all of us sitting down and saying, "Okay, what do we do for the best interest of the student?" There are those that believe that that you don't sit down with the different groups and say we need to kind of rework some of our deals. The deals that we have in place with our groups right now, they're, they're, they're under contract. You can't do anything about that. If, if, if they come back and say for the best interest of the college, I mean, you know, the, the, the firefighters just went through it, the, the, the uh, public employees went through it, the county. I mean, everybody sat down and said, okay, well, we can't afford this, we can't afford this, how are we going to get through it? Um, I can't you know, on this TV show or, or, or through you say, hey, Giles, this is, these are the methods because that's negotiating the union's contract. That is not only illegal, but that, that, that is micromanaging. Um, what I can say is, is the, the, the Valley's going to watch this and they're going to watch what we do and how we do it. And that's got to be very transparent. And as a trustee, I will be sure that it's transparent. Now, I know that there are some people that say, well, you know, we don't like the fact, Joe, that you talk to, to members of the media and you're not supposed to talk to the media and you're not able to talk to business people. Well, that's, that's just kind of the way it is. Um, I, 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 take, I take direction very, very well. But I think that the taxpayers, the students, the employees, when they ask you a question, they want an answer. And, 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 and that's just that, that's the way it's going to be. Um, is there going to be pain in this? Absolutely. Um, is every city going through pain? I mean, the, you know, the, think about when Jim Cox came back to Victorville. I mean, the greatest city manager probably ever ran a city here in the state of California had to come back and ultimately lay off 200 people. He didn't want to do that, but he had no choice but to keep things going. I don't want to lay off. As I've said, I'm a job creator. So I think that there's other ways to do that. People have to read through and say, okay, well, how, if you're not going to lay off, you know, maybe we all need to take a cut of some kind, cut back on, on the benefits. We have a very good benefit package, okay? We pick up 100% of the cost, but we can't take a 20% increase like we did this year, another $470,000, and just keep doing that every year. We can't do it. So eventually the trustees, again, getting back to one of your earlier questions, what is the role of the trustee to hire the president superintendent to establish the policies by which they're going to run? And I think we need to send that, that message. We said to the president and superintendent back in July, we, we adopted a, um, a, 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 um, a three-year balanced budget amendment. I, I call it a balanced budget amendment. We have to live by that. And we can't say that we want to do that and then fall short of not standing tall on issues that are politically sensitive but ensure our student success. We are there to educate students. How do you plan to resolve the $29 million projected cumulative deficit in the next four years without compromising VBC students and cutting more classes? Okay, cutting classes and students and, and, and $29 million that's got to come out of the budget. That's a very tough question. Um, so here's what we've done so far. We've already taken $20 million out of our budget. We're facing another $5 million here at the end of the year, three to $5 million, depending on whether or not this, this thing is passed to, you know, for the state legislator. And, and for that reason, we do not know whether we're gonna to continue to get the same amount of money we've been getting, or we're gonna get another cut from where we're at. And, and, that, and so, so, so that's a challenge. Without cutting services, um, 
depending on the circumstances, uh, we passed a board resolution that says that we will balance the budget, all five board members voted for it, that we will, and the superintendent president agreed that we will balance the budget by 2015, 2016. So that's not very far off, because 13 is just around the corner. So having said that then, we need to make the hard decisions of what it's gonna do to keep the school open and to take care of the needs of, of, the, current, uh, of, of the current operation, but it may have to be scaled down. It may have to be reduced. So it would be better to reduce the total operation in size and scope to the dollar that, that we have and we'll be able to keep the school open with than to allow the school to close because of, quote unquote, uh, the more current term would be bankruptcy, be like bankruptcy for a district. And that, that just is unacceptable. Our community won't like it. Our students won't like it. The board won't like it. Nobody's going to like it. This is, not a, this is not a thing any of us want to see happen. So I think that for that reason, they're all working together to make sure it does not happen. But we will have more cuts. We'll be right back. Raw Dog Productions, Tales of the Frontier, Family Television Entertainment. Law Dog Productions, Tales of the Frontier. Legal problems? Don't go all alone. The other guys have attorneys just waiting to blow you away. Contact Iwanzak. Accidental death? Injured on the job? Contact Iwanzak. Business litigation? Vehicle accident? Unlawful detainer? Criminal litigation? Get the proper defense by going on the attack. Iwanzak Law Firm. Trial lawyers for serious problems. If the college does lose its accreditation, how does that affect the monies already allocated under Proposition JJ? First thing, the college is not going to lose its accreditation. There's two things that, that, that are a sure thing in life, death and taxes. I think in this particular case, I could you know, look at you, Giles, and say, listen, there are three things that, that are here, death, taxes, and the fact that VVC is not going to shut down. Okay, We're not going to lose our accreditation. I think that, that VVC losing its accreditation would be, be, be equal to me finding out that there's no money in Social Security. I would walk back to Washington, I'd crawl to Washington, and I would do what I have to to be sure that the elected officials found, found that money. Um, the school's not going to close. I think this has been a very grave lesson that hopefully we never have to go through again. Uh, there may still be some pain in this, um, but I don't see the, um, I, as, 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 as a taxpayer, um, I would not be concerned about the college closing, but I would be concerned that we never allow this to ever happen again. And so I think that the public pressure, and I have seen public pressure brought on, I've seen people now come to the meetings that we haven't seen. Uh, we have a resident in Spring Valley Lake who, who used to be in law enforcement, a very, very prominent person, a uh, graduate. I mean, his wife graduated, he graduated, his son graduated, called me up one day and he said, Joe, this college is not gonna close and I'm absolutely adamant and now this person's coming to all the meetings. And, and I think that sends a message. I think it sends a strong message to the board. If the college loses its accreditation, how, how would that affect the monies approved by the citizens in 2008 with the passage of Proposition JJ allowing $297 million for eliminating the college debt, upgrading infrastructure, and purchasing land for construction for new facilities? Well, I'm not that kind of counselor. I'm a high school counselor. Uh, I'm not a legal counselor. So I don't know exactly what would happen in, in that scenario. But I can tell you that if I'm sworn in as a, a college board trustee, I will hold to the promise that I've made to take care of that college and those students the best way I know how. I can't answer all those details, and I don't know that anybody that, out there that can. John, do you think the college will lose its accreditation? No, I do not. And I'm praying that they do not. Well, that's a tough question. There are two scenarios there also. One scenario, assuming what you say is true, and that does come to pass. Well, that's a bad news scenario because what will happen, the state treats that as a quote-unquote bankruptcy. 
-hmm. So they'll come in and they'll change the game on everybody that's at the school. Mm -hmm. Something we do not want. They'll come in and they'll upset contracts. Uh, they'll change the number of people. They'll put different people in different positions. They'll change the focus of, of, of the college program. They'll do what it takes to get it back in balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not something you ask the question. So that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. But we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And we don't think that's going to happen. And we're quite sure it's not going to happen. Um, our accreditation team has put together a, a, a program for us to uh, us to uh, uh, res uh, you know to work towards, and we've done that. We've accepted the the accreditation uh, comments and, uh, uh, and and recommendations by saying that we will overcome. We will get this done. We will join together. We will accept their criticism of our district and we will fix those problems and that's the attitude we have going on right now for that reason I say there's no way that we can lose our accreditation at this point hopefully we can move to warning from where we're at can you please describe the importance of creating a culture of respect civility and dialogue and trust uh, at the college yeah. You know, 90% of what I do every day as a high school counselor at Silverado is helping people with relationships, relationships with uh, teachers and students, teachers and teachers, um, teachers and parents, students and parents. Um, we got to be civil in this. The board members must be civil with one another, and um, staff must be civil with one another. The president must be civil with uh, the staff and the board. And I will be a civil board member. Uh, I won't call anybody out, but I, I have firm beliefs on what is right for students, and I'm going to hold strongly to those. Whether they're popular with my fellow uh, board members or not, if I believe it's good for a student, I'm going to hold on to that. Well, I, I think that um, I moved here in 1988, May of 1988, and, 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 and I cut my first deal um, with Victor Valley Community College when Dr. Gould was, was present. Um, I, I really felt, you know, with the help of people like Robert Lovingood and everybody else, to, that, that we needed to have an economic development council of some kind. And I felt that the college was a place to start because they had, you know, on, on job training and, and things like that. And uh, so we went to the college. Um, ever since then, we tend to roll over a president about every two years. That's not good. Um, other presidents of other colleges know that VVC has a fairly high turnover. I, I fault that, and candidly, you, I've had turnover in my company in the past. Every once in a while, you have to look at yourself and say, am I the cause? Um, and I think that, that if you do not have a strong board, you do not have a strong board that is unified, you can have five very strong personalities that are, are going in five different directions. The sense is that, that a president doesn't want to work there. So we need to have, our board needs to be strong in its conviction. Uh, we need to, 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 to attract the right leaders at all levels within the college. Um, and we need to stay out of the politics that come with it. I mean, all the all the different groups out there want to have their own person in there, and they've interviewed. And you know, this is this is a business. This is a business about taking care of you know 12,000 students and 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 uh, you know a 60 million dollar budget. And uh, so there's been a lot of turnover, and, it, and it's really a shame because the industry knows it. This is not something that's new. The industry knows that VVC's had a big turnover. How will you help in the sustainability and leadership at the college? Well, um, uh, again, um, that's a personal question. I, I'm not used to talking about myself. I'd rather be talking about what the needs are of the school. But um, I've been president several times on the board. I'm currently president on the board. I, I believe personally I have a stabilizing effect on the board, even when there are great differences amongst the members. I can't, I can't tell them.